So let's get into Taiwan. I, I guess just the, the most simple question, what do you think is going to be happening? Is it, is it, are we looking at an invasion in the next few years? Do you think they're playing the long game? Like, w- w- what areas do you think they're kind of going to cover here? Yeah, like I said, she is preparing for war. Everybody can see it. He's he's boosting the military. He's changing draft orders. He's uh, he's you know planting the domestic food production line so that he doesn't get his food supply cut off. And uh, so there's no question about him prepping the war. Is he going to actually invade? Well, there's there's two thinkings here. Uh, the Pentagon seems to believe that 2027 is the time or the year that that, that he's going to do it. Uh, I think we'll see more concrete evidence after the 2024 Taiwan presidential election, which is in January next year. Uh, if a uh, KMT, which is the Nationalist Party president, is elected, they could resort to something not an in, not an invasion, but something like a softer approach. Um, you can say it's called a united front approach, or you can call it something like a uh, soft power approach. But basically, it's to weaken the, the, the people in Taiwan who don't want wars, they want peace, to say that there's no alternative to reunification. Uh, so why bother choosing to side with the United States when we share a common ancestry, when we're basically bound by blood, we're as one, right? To influence those people. And... Uh, one of the Politburo Standing Committee member named Wang Huning. Uh, by the way, he wrote a book called America Against America in 1991. So if you guys uh, want, are curious about what Xi Jinping is doing to the United States right now, go read that book because it tells you exactly the, uh, the targets of attack that the CCP focuses on in the United States. Anyways, so he's also been tasked by Xi Jinping to create a peace unification formula. And this is supposed to come out before the end of 2024, which is also, um, oh, sorry, before the third term ends for Xi Jinping, which is 2027. Now, on the other side is what she invade. Like I said, I believe that he is um, going to do something to Taiwan before the end of the third term because he's uh, just age itself is a factor. I believe he's, he's 70, almost 70 something. By 2027, he will be almost 80. Uh, you, you got to look up the exact age, but uh, I believe he's getting pretty old. Uh, we know what happens when a person in charge is cognitively incapable of commanding a, a military or even issuing orders that make sense. Uh, that's more apparent in an authoritarian uh, regime than even a democratic country, right? We hear complaints about Biden being old or uh Senator Dianne Feinstein being old all the time, right? So whether you agree with that or not, but that's I think that's a pretty logical conclusion. When you're older, your cognitive abilities go down. You can't really think rationally sometimes. So for him, he's also, uh, uh, that that's another thing. So he has to get it done. And uh, if he doesn't get it done, even though, you know, I don't think that he has opposition to secure the fourth term, I do think that he will be challenged again on it because people would say, you promised to take Taiwan, which is something that even Mao can't do, but you couldn't do it by this time. Uh, you know, what happened, right? So for him, he doesn't want to resort to a military invasion unless the peace unification formula fails. And when he does do the uh, invasion, there could also be like a very small scale war to uh, maybe it could be missiles and destroying the air defense on Taiwan. And or they can do something like a blockade, which is to encircle Taiwan with ships and planes to kind of shut the area off to prevent ships coming in and out of Taiwan to resupply them. Uh, either way, though, I don't really want a war over Taiwan to happen. Uh, because I think the casualty on both sides would be so great and and the devastation to, uh, you know, things like semiconductor, technology, economy, all of these things, the world, the world would grind to a halt if that happens. And I, I don't want to see that. But then again, you know, I always question if American deterrence even has a say in what she wants to do, given the fact that I think he wants to finish what uh, Mao couldn't, couldn't do or what Mao started. So I, I'm very conflicted, actually, in, in that question, because on one hand, I don't think that she cares about America's deterrence because it's just something that he wants to do anyways, whether or not he, um, he's, America can deter him or not. 
Uh, on the other hand, if the Russian-Ukraine war doesn't end well for Russia um, to the point where you know we see Putin step down or he's forced down, that could also serve as a factor maybe to she to think that you know maybe I shouldn't do this because at that point my my own uh, seat would be lost. I would lose my power. So I don't know yet, but I do think that there's an indication to me he's going to invade and he's prepping for it. Whether he'll do it in the end, that's still a big question. Why do you think they're starting to try to play the peacemaker in Russia, Ukraine, and even in other situations around the world? I mean, before, you know, our planes had fully taken off from Afghanistan, they had their envoys on the ground within conversation with the Taliban. So why do you think they're starting to try to play that peacemaker role, especially in the situation you just highlighted for them? The best outcome would be a total Russian control over Ukraine. She's own power. Uh, outweighs everything. So in the worst position, he can't risk losing uh, his own power in the sense that if he supports Russia too much uh, to the point where he, you know, at this stage, at least when he's not ready to decouple completely or to actually step into war or to break off the, the um, to break off the relationship with the West. At this point, I don't think he, he can uh, play such a like to not play peacemaker uh, because I think what he's still trying to do on the world stage is he's still trying to maintain that he's the leader of the authoritarian world order and uh, that you know we saw this with the summit that just happened a few days ago or it's still happening actually the Central Asia summit uh, with uh, countries coming to China right that they had put on this like huge show of uh, prosperity for them um, she wants to show the world that there's an alternative to the Western world in that the United States is no longer the big guy and, and that leadership around the world should start to follow China. I mean, that's also the goal as to why he wants to invade Taiwan, right? Once he can take Taiwan, he can get access to critical semiconductor technology, secure the Pacific Ocean, unlock the first island chain so that he can dominate the world order, right? So uh, all of these points to him having that ambition but if if China if uh, Russia falls, the risk is that what if Russia what if Putin falls? What if Russia democratizes? What if Russia becomes a a Western country? What if you know what if Ukraine joins NATO? What if Russia ends up joining NATO? What if the person that he puts so much faith into distracting the West in Europe, uh, Putin, ends up you know stepping down or whatever? that he loses Russia as an ally, then now he has Russia to the north, India to the west, and then to the east, you have Japan, South Korea, the United States. Then he's facing people on three fronts, or enemies on three fronts. You can't have that. But if Putin can somehow stay in power, right, even if he loses war, the war, but he can still, you know, they negotiate this peace deal, uh, which I really don't see it happening anytime soon, given the fact that I know, I think they, Ukraine supposed to, supposedly lost Bakhmut today, uh, but the, the counteroffense hasn't started completely. So I'm not sure where the direction of the war goes. But again, I just think that he can't risk Putin stepping out of power. And then that's why he needs to play the peacemaker because he needs to, also there's the European factor, right? Uh, last point, he wants to appear like dependent uh, the Europe, Europeans have to depend on China to negotiate without China there's no peace in this conflict and I think he wants to show the world that whatever China says is more important than what the United States has to say <laughs>